Now here we have the brand new fragrance by the House of Oud, and this one is called Dear Karma. The first thing that caught my attention about this bottle is the beautiful presentation. Obviously, it says Dear on one side, Karma on the other. It almost has like this cabaret circus theme to it with the stars, the eyeball. It's a really beautiful presentation. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. This is a, an incense, saffron, rose, and leather fragrance with some absinthe and sponge sugar. I'll tell you all about it in just a little while, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on the brand new fragrance by The House of Oud, this one is called Dear Karma. I'll talk to you about the notes, the smell, performance, longevity, comparisons, and all that good stuff. But before I dive into the review, I do want to mention that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, and of course, if you love smelling your best, hit subscribe, hit the bell, and give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It would really, really mean a lot to me. So, all things considered, I love the House of Oud. This is a brilliant, brilliant house. And of course, I have so many of their offerings from White Pearl to Guilty Crush to Cypress Shade. And I have just acquired so many of their fragrances throughout the years. And it really goes without saying that they make some really high quality fragrances, but also their presentations are second to none. And I think a lot of the people who purchase them are really enjoying, one, the bottles that are polished and they just have this beautiful lustrous feel to them and even the base is very heavy for these fragrances but the presentation is just absolutely gorgeous so with this particular fragrance if you're interested it is available at so avant-garde this is not a sponsored video in any way they're not even the ones who sent me the bottle i just want to give you a plug to what i know is an authorized retailer for this particular fragrance so with this particular fragrance you have the saffron you have the leather they're two of the same, to be honest with you, because saffron contributes to a leather accord. But then you also have the absinthe, or it could just be wormwood or artemisia. And then you also have the sponge sugar in addition to the rose and some incense qualities. There's a bit of patchouli as well, some vetiver, if I'm remembering correctly. And it has a pretty interesting and complex note breakdown. I'll talk to you about the smell in just a second. Let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation first. Right in the opening of this fragrance, you got the spice and the rose. I didn't get anything green and I didn't get a lot of incense per se, a touch of smoke, yes. There's definitely this spicy component to it that is, it can't be missed, right? You're gonna get it right away. It opens up with that saffron and that leather vibe. And it's a really interesting leather vibe, if I'm gonna be honest with you. It's, a, it's not too rough and tumble and it's not too aggressive because I have encountered some leather fragrances that I mean, it requires a very certain personality to pull it off. This one is a bit more subdued, but it's not like a smooth, velvety, suede leather. It's nothing like that, right? It's, it's there. It definitely has a presence in the fragrance, but it's also something where, you know, it's not mild, but it makes its statement and it makes its presence known. The rose rests gently on the leather and I got it right away, right? So it's a rose sprinkled with saffron on top and the incense that's in here is myrrh. Now, from what I'm getting, it's not a sweet incense, right? Because I know there's sweet myrrh, otherwise known as a Apopanax, which you'll find in fragrances like Jubilation 25 by Amouage or Hypnotizing Fire by The Harmonist, which is another great fragrance. But this one is more of like the bitter myrrh. And I think that's the type of myrrh that was required to complement the saffron or the leather. At least that's what I'm getting from this fragrance. So you have a little bit of that incense quality. There's maybe perhaps a touch of smoke, but it's ever so slight. And you know, I keep going back to it and I'm smelling it and I'm thinking to myself, do I necessarily get anything herbal or aromatic from this one? And I would imagine that, you know, had the absinthe accord been a bit stronger, it could have been a bit licorice-y or it could have been a bit more herbal. And I've smelled a lot of fragrances that do contain 
Absinthe or Wormwood, some by Thierry Mugler. Uh, there's also Absinthe by Nasomato. There are a lot of fragrances that utilize that ingredient, and this one smells like none of them. So it kind of marches to the beat of its own drum. Now, as far as that spun sugar accord is concerned, there is something that is modestly sweet, right? So it's not overbearingly sweet. It's not, you know, sickeningly sweet. As a matter of fact, if you're not looking for it, you're going to miss it. Um, but there is something lingering underneath it all that kind of conveys a little bit of sweetness. Um, but again, it's overshadowed by the rose and the saffron, the spices, that leather accord. And perhaps that roughness that you get underneath it all, on account of the leather, is probably also being complemented by the vetiver. So the vetiver, I think, is of the earthier variety in this fragrance. And it just produces this, ov like, this overall... Um, you know, really dark and mysterious effect. So from the name Dear Karma, I really didn't know what to expect. And of course, with that sort of a dark, spicy rose, it might put you in the mindset of like an Ombre Nomade by Louis Vuitton. Or if you've tried with all the saffron, uh, it might put you in the mindset of one of the leathers by Memo Paris. Or perhaps even Producer Michael by Fragrance Dubois. That is a really strong leather fragrance with a lot of saffron in it. So this one kind of falls in the same wheelhouse, but it has that touch of absinthe and it has the spun sugar. And it really does go in its own direction with the incense. So I really appreciate the uniqueness and originality behind this composition. And I think this is the perfect time to release it. So thank goodness the brand, you know, had that insight and said, you know what, let's go ahead and release this one right when the weather starts to get cold. This way our fans slash consumers have an opportunity to wear it at the appropriate time. And I think it's perfect for that. So Dear Karma, I wasn't really expecting it to smell this way. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. I didn't know if it was gonna be a, a very bright, fluffy, airy type of a fragrance. I mean, I don't know, I look at the presentation and for whatever reason, it gives me like hot air balloon vibes. So I didn't know what to expect. But having smelled it now, I can tell you that this is a really interesting fragrance and one that I would totally recommend. And I think you can get a sample from So Avant Garde. I'm going to drop the link down below, not an affiliate link, not a sponsored video, but I am going to drop the link down below because I'm pretty sure they have a sampling service. So this way you don't necessarily have to cough up a couple hundred dollars to buy a bottle. You can actually get a sample of it first and see if it works on your skin. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I did make half a dozen comparisons, but that's just to kind of give you a frame of reference, especially since we're existing in a world where smell of vision doesn't exist yet. So I want to better help you understand what this fragrance potentially smells like. Longevity on it, 10 plus hours on skin. I mean, this one performs very, very well. No slouch there. Longevity, uh, projection on this one, a little beyond an arm's length for the first hour of application, and it became an elbows length scent right around hour seven, a skin scent right around hour 10. As far as the versatility goes, cold weather, so fall and winter, well, depending on where you live, the type of climate you live in, so on and so forth, perfectly unisex, I gotta be honest with you, and I think this is more of a dressed up fragrance. As far as the presentation goes, beautiful presentation. I mean, I always really admire the presentation of House of Oud bottles. And there are some, like their emerald offering, which is all green, and it has a little splash of color in there to contrast the green. Those are a bit more on the simple side of things, but I love what they've been doing with like Guilty Crush and now this one where they actually put a picture on it. I think it's gorgeous. My final verdict on this fragrance is, I think it's a wonderful spicy rose for the colder weather. It's a brand new release. You're not gonna smell like anybody else. Beautiful presentation. And in comparison to a lot of other niche fragrances, House of Wood fragrances are actually, I'm not gonna say affordably priced, but competitively priced. So I hope you have the opportunity to try this one. Sample it at the very least. I think, um, I think you owe it to yourself to at least sample it, especially if you're a fan of Saffron and Rose. This one is solid. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you took something of value from today's episode. And if you did, please do consider supporting the channel by clicking subscribe, hitting the bell, and giving this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It would really mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. And we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.